Come with us on a journey down the Columbia River aboard the Columbia Gorge Sternwheeler. Before getting on board, we stop to do the tourist thing and have our picture taken with our ship's captain. Notice she has her hair in braids. There's a good reason for that. The winds blowing down through the gorge can be quite strong, and that day they were particularly strong. For a lot of the trip, we stood out in front of the, in front of the wheelhouse, up on the top deck, just standing in the full blast of the wind. It was fabulous and exhilarating and so much fun. As you can see, we had plenty of friends around to see us off. And one of our fellow passengers was kind enough to click a photo of us so we can be included in our own adventure. And here we are up on the top deck. We're just pulling out into the channel now. The Columbia River is second only to the Mississippi in terms of size, and it actually flows more water through it than the Colorado River does. This is a river that carries ocean-going vessels up and down, transporting a tremendous amount of cargo every year. And here we go. Look at that flag flutter. This isn't the windiest we've seen, the, the Columbia, but it was a pretty windy day, and we enjoyed it completely. Of course, any record of a trip on a paddle wheel boat wouldn't be complete without taking a look at the paddle. So we went back to the stern and hung out over the deck rail to take some shots. C did an incredible job of getting shots, defying death, hanging out over this churning thing. Isn't that beautiful? We didn't get too far up the channel before we greeted a barge on its way down to Portland. This is a small barge carrying, I believe she said, uh, oil, some building supplies, and a lot of containers. You don't realize how truly big even a little barge like this is until it comes up beside you. Until you realize the ship itself is five stories tall. Our ship's captain let loose with a blast on her little steam horn, and the barge returned a welcoming hello with a blast on his big ship's horn. Wow. It was great. Here we come up on the Bridge of the Gods. This was originally a rock formation that spanned the river, creating a natural bridge for the Native Americans to cross. The rock bridge fell down many thousands of years ago, creating dangerous rapids, some of the most dangerous rapids along the Oregon Trail. Lewis and Clark found these the most threatening of all the rapids that they encountered on their journey to the ocean. What you're seeing now, of course, is a modern replacement, a steel replacement, that bridges the river. It's running from Cascade Locks in Oregon over to the state of Washington. When this bridge was first dedicated, they actually had Charles Lindbergh come and fly the spirit of St. Louis underneath this span. We're now heading up the Columbia, up toward Portland, and eventually the Pacific Ocean. Isn't it gorgeous up through the gorge? This part in through here is some of the narrowest of the shipping lanes. As a matter of fact, we had to pull over and wait while the barge came through. There just isn't enough room for more than one large ship to go through here safely at once. Out along the shore, you can barely make out some wooden structures. These are platforms that the Native Americans use when they're out fishing for salmon. Salmon is a regulated fish. The federal government controls the fishing for salmon in order to be able to keep the salmon supply plentiful. Native Americans are allowed to fish year-round for their own sustenance, and during other times of the year, they're allowed to fish in order to sell salmon. So when the salmon are running, you can come out on any street corner in this area along the Columbia River, and you can find Indians selling fresh salmon out of ice chests in the back of their car. 
because this is a shipping channel, it's not uncommon to see tugboats going by. This little guy is actually rounding up stray logs that have been separated from other log shipments coming from the different logging companies that are up and down the river. They go by and they capture them, chain them all together, and if you could see, he's actually pulling a long chain, log after log after log, of these magnificent trees that have been felled. In the river, coming up on the shipping channel, where it narrows the most, you'll see these, temp these piers out there, and these are for the barges just to actually tie up to when they have to wait to get clear passage, wait for another ship to come through. And there's quite a few of these up and down the river, where coming up on the part where it really narrows. And this is a sea tradition. She always has to take a shot of the water from the boat. And now we continue up the channel, up the river, heading toward the Bonneville Dam. You can see part of the breastworks of the dam. It's actually quite a large structure, providing power to most of the western United States. We're almost at the end of our journey toward Portland. We turn around to the Bonneville Dam. What you see in this picture is the right side of one of the locks that are in the dam, allowing the ships to raise and lower and pass through the dam to continue on up to the ocean. There's also, uh, because this is a salmon running area, in order for the salmon to go upstream to spawn, they've had to build salmon ladders, different steps built into the side of the dam that allow the salmon to keep leaping up and return up to their breeding grounds upriver. And a couple last shots of us up in the bow of the boat, getting ready to turn and head back to pier. Thanks so much for coming with us. We hope you enjoy the journey.